you also manage a uh, uh, large cap fund and infra fund L- talking about large cap how can you define large cap fund as such see large caps uh, are top 100 companies by market capitalization as defined by uh, sebi and this list gets updated every 6 months so those are the large caps and in a large cap fund i need to have 80% of my portfolio into these companies at least 80% so that's it uh, like that's the broad definition of large caps and uh, uh, these includes like some of the largest companies in the country and uh, they have a very long track record and they have been through thick and thin these companies and they have been through business up cycles down cycles okay so uh, to that extent uh, it's a more stable fund compared to some of uh, uh, more uh, let's say riskier categories uh, this is a less risky category within the equity category itself mm-hmm. and it will give you more stable, stable. and less volatile returns okay okay so when we say market cap means uh, it's about one company's total value and based on that it's a top 100 companies that is what uh, sir is talking about and when we speak about uh, uh, passive fund these days this is passive fund is something which is especially nifty uh, fund which is a uh, talk now uh, too much so uh, how different it is uh, activity managed fund and you know passive funds see passive funds and active funds the basic difference is that in an in a passive fund there is no fund manager who is taking uh, conscious calls on uh, choosing a stock or choosing a sector uh, it just follows the way for example nifty how the nifty is in terms of uh, stocks and weights of those stocks that's how the passive fund will invest while in terms in an active fund it's the fund manager's judgment also which plays a part mm-hmm. so while we also do follow a benchmark for example for large cap our benchmark is nifty 100 mm-hmm. but we also we take some active calls like mm-hmm. Uh, we may not like a certain company or a sector so we may go underweight uh, like less than the benchmark weight or not have that sector or company at all or if we like something we may have more weightage than the benchmark so that's how an active fund manager will manage it and uh, over a period of time i think within india mm-hmm. i think uh, the active funds uh, have been able to beat uh, the index fund in that category okay okay and and that's good and uh, it's always good to identify something um, uh, active fund also along with the uh, passive fund or you need to have a mixture of it uh, up to the clients who are investing and uh, another point is that there are a lot of uh, attraction for people to uh, capital market and at the same time people go behind the, the return which they have so uh, last one year if we look at it there is a lot of return come from a small cap and mid cap uh, sector there are a lot of new people coming to the market and they have a expectation that uh, getting a high return especially this one year small cap and large cap has given a pretty good return and they all investing in that people who are starting with a 5000 rupees sip they have only either small cap or a mid cap they don't have a, a large cap in their allocation so what is your take especially people who are investing newly or people who are in the market having a large cap in their portfolio you know so see investing first of all it should always be for the longer term so you cannot really extrapolate one year return uh, to say if three year or five years and and you cannot uh, expect that uh, a fund will give a very strong returns year after year so that is one uh, second <coughs> in terms of different categories so each category comes with its own uh, risk profile so for example you mentioned small cap so if i compare say small cap mid cap and large cap in terms of uh, risks uh, it's the weight uh, it's the inverse correlation so the large cap will have lesser risk mm. and small cap will have the maximum risk and mid cap will have more risk than large cap so <clears throat> higher the risk higher the return correct so over a period of time uh, one should ideally expect that uh, small and mid cap may give slightly higher returns than large caps you know that comes with its own set of volatility so if the investors are ready to ride that volatility mm-hmm. uh, then you can choose so what i'm saying is that the decision should be conscious mm-hmm. okay. based on risk and long term returns okay and not based on what has happened in the last one to two years okay okay and typically what i have seen is that over a period of time 
there are years where large caps do well there are years where small caps do well and if you keep on shifting between mm-hmm. these categories then you will lose out mm-hmm. ideally one should have a balanced portfolio uh, okay. one should have uh, maybe uh, large cap mid cap small cap uh, in a certain proportion okay that's the best way to do it which we call asset allocation asset allocation and then stick to it don't change uh, based on one year or two year yeah, yeah, yeah we have a tendency that uh, we are thinking that uh, now i will invest in small cap and mm-hmm. the market uh, goes down i will move to uh, large cap so that, yeah. that it's a i think especially uh, uh, when we come to the market initially we will see uh, you know historical return and try to cash that mm. but uh, when you exit there is a lot of uh, a uh, problem and the, uh, you, no, no one can really type the market also that is something which uh, uh, generally people may not understand but it's happening uh, yeah. yeah you know so there are economic cycles which will keep on happening so uh, last 2 3 years have been very good for small caps hmm. and uh, maybe large caps will catch up at some point of time okay okay and uh, when when we uh, speak about uh, uh, investing uh, in 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 any 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 market right um, we have a tendency that uh, why don't i invest directly into stocks uh, not in mutual fund and they may not have a, a time also they may not have the knowledge also so according to you who should start invest in a dmat directly uh and what is the minimum thing they should do they should be doing if they are investing directly it's a, i know that it, uh, you will have a big views on that but at least a two three points which they have to do uh, before investing uh, directly into the uh, dmat account it's again comes to risk and returns so uh, in a mutual fund uh, the returns can be lesser mm-hmm. versus if you invest directly into equity markets at the same time uh, risks are also much lesser mm. there are professionals managing mm-hmm. and uh, there is a whole uh, regulation behind it uh, and it is ge- becoming more and more regulated uh, in terms of investing directly into equity equity stocks uh, you know so it's ag- it again depends on an individual's uh, propensity for risk ability to take risk um, so i would say it's a very individual decision but be mindful of the risks okay okay right so risks will always be higher if okay. you invest directly directly and uh, risks see returns are easy to calculate mm. risks are not easy to calculate mm. so they will only be seen when they when it occurs okay okay so it again i will end it with saying that it's an individual's decision individual. but be mindful of the risk which okay, you are taking okay, okay. i think i think at least we need to ask them that if they have time or if they have knowledge i think they really need to test themselves before taking a call also yeah uh, again as a, it all comes down to their ability to manage risk okay and with stent risk okay <coughs> because even if you have all the knowledge in the world uh-huh. uh, nobody can really predict where the markets are going okay and uh, especially for stocks and usually if the portfolio is not diversified mm-hmm. and then the risks obviously are much higher okay, okay. and everybody will have their learning curve <coughs> i will just emphasize that be mindful of the risks which anybody is taking okay okay sir uh, you you spoke about uh, uh, you know mutual fund as a professional management and uh, it's a very important point which we we look at it as a fund manager's presence and looking at uh, uh, your style of managing it uh, you, you know what are the key things which you look at it uh, before adding a company to uh, your uh, fund portfolio the criteria could be uh, which uh, can be talked in the in, to the public you know so it, these are like they are not very uh, difficult like the company should be good hmm. their governance should be good and uh, see typically what we do is that we follow a uh, investment philosophy uh, at tata mf uh, which is growth at reasonable price uh, which essentially means that we look at companies where we think that uh, the earnings will grow uh, at a reasonable pace over the next 5 to 5 to 10 years at the same times the valuations are uh, okay so they are not very expensive so those are the kind of companies which we look at and uh, uh, that's the way we design our portfolio we look at uh, mispricing in the market so if we think that uh, the market is not really capturing the kind of upside which this company can give mm-hmm. 
uh, we okay. will try to increase the weightage and conversely if we think that the market is factoring too much then we may try to reduce the weightage or exit all together i think there are a lot of work behind it i think as an individual investor when we invest we we have our own um uh, you know our own time and uh, difficulty to capture all these things when on a regular basis uh, okay and what is your uh, final take on people who are investing in uh, large cap as a as a category mm-hmm. and what they should be mindful about it see why large caps i said are less risky compared to small and mid cap but uh, they are at the end of the day equity schemes mm. so uh, you will get good returns mm-hmm. uh, but uh, you have to hold it for long term again okay. so i will emphasize again and again long term long term because markets uh, they can be very volatile they can give you very strong returns over the short term mm-hmm. or they can give you very weak returns also uh, but uh, uh, do it systematically Mm-hmm. over a period of time mm-hmm. uh, and uh, then you will definitely get good returns okay okay thank you so much sir uh, you have spoke about a uh, tata ethical fund and uh, large cap also you manage infra fund also so i think uh, uh, with the time constraint not really getting into infra fund as such but uh, do you want to uh, give, highlight uh, what is infra fund and mm-hmm. uh, uh, what are the kind of investors should be looking at kind of this kind <coughs> of funds see it's a thematic fund mm. and uh, it basically if you look at it on a very broad level it's uh, it's it it it's a play on the india's investment uh, side of gdp mm-hmm. so when i say investments uh, it's like investments into roads ports also any physical infrastructure mm-hmm. so that's how uh, which is the main driver for this uh, for this theme mm-hmm. there are various sectors which we invest in but for example uh, engineering uh, construction ports power uh, cement steel uh, but you can see like it's mostly the basic industries uh, and uh, related to physical infrastructure which we really invest in into this fund and uh, the theme is uh, riskier compared to what we discussed earlier say a large cap or even an ethical fund for example and uh, <clears throat> Uh, you can see very sharp returns mm-hmm. uh, which we saw uh, in the last 3 years or you can see very very big drawdowns which okay. we saw in the period of 2008 mm-hmm. so uh, it's a much more riskier fund and uh, investors who are looking to invest in a theme uh, they can consider it uh, but be again i will say that uh, risks obviously are much higher here compared to a normal a large cap fund uh, or even a mid cap fund for example okay okay yeah we have a attraction in terms of uh, infrastructure fund definitely it's a because of uh, last uh, couple of years uh, return also so i i i'm sure that uh, your this information definitely give a uh, idea for people that uh, uh, expectation setting is very important before mm. entering into this fund and if they have a longer period very good Uh, come and invest or in case if any correction is there should they have the ability to wait mm. for a period i think that's good uh, i i'm thank you so much sir and uh, what is your final comment for our audience uh, in terms of uh, coming to capital markets at as such i think uh, indian capital indian investors they have come a long way uh, and uh, we have seen such a strong growth in sips uh, which we have seen but in my opinion there is still a lot more to cover okay. and uh, we would like more and more investors to uh, explore uh, the mutual fund route okay and uh, create wealth for themselves uh, participate in india's growth okay you know equity at the end of the day is one of the best class best asset class because it gives you protection against inflation mm-hmm. which not many asset classes do and uh, mutual funds in itself as i have mentioned earlier <clears throat> they are highly regulated the investor interest are safe and very liquid so it in my opinion is the best way for any individual investor to participate in indian equity story okay 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 thank you sir thank you i think this is a very valuable uh, session and uh, we are so grateful uh, for you to come uh, come down uh, to our studio and at the same time uh, our audience will take a lot uh, especially when you spoke about uh, tata ethical fund uh, there are a lot of people spoke about but uh, from the fund manager hearing it's the first time in our uh, in our uh, channel and uh, uh, 
uh, not only that i think uh, very less opportunity to uh, get uh, a person like you come in and uh, speak about it so really grateful and thank you so much for taking time out for us yeah thank you so much thank you thank you thank you